Good morning. It is really, really, really exciting to see all of you here. I was just joking with Eric, our, our, uh, our media technician, that, you know, when, when you invite an outside speaker and say, sure, it'd be fine if you brought along a few members of your board of directors, and then they triple your Sunday morning attendance. Yay! So, now that I've kind of put that teaser out there, it is really wonderful today that we have with us Susie Zeke, the executive director of, of um, Toby's House. You will be hearing from her later. She has invited, I think, everybody on her friends list to come to come today. I know that we have members of Toby's House Board of Directors, we have staff, we have family members. I think she walked up and down 10th Avenue South and recruited strangers to come in, so this is, this is great. And Toby, you'll have, or um, Susie, you'll have a chance to introduce in the way that you would like to a, a little bit later on in the service, but it is really wonderful to have you all here today. Um, a couple of notes. It, we are like on the threshold of Lent. How in the world did that happen? <sighs> so, um, to get us started for that, today after worship, I've got a bunch of old palms in my office that have been hanging around for at least like three years, and we're going to burn them. So, um, I don't know, 15 minutes after the close of worship, after I have a chance to um, change my robe. I'm really not excited about burning things in a white robe, so um, we'll just meet out on the, on the um, sidewalk in front of the church, and we will burn those palms and get ready for Ash Wednesday. Our Ash Wednesday service will be this Wednesday at 6.30. It'll be a combined service with the United Church of Christ Congregation and Christ United Methodist Church, so we'll be, we'll be doing that observation together. And with Lent, we are going to be doing another small group discussion opportunity. So if you're interested in participating in a small group that will get together, hopefully weekly, that will kind of be determined by the group itself. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the table in the narthex. If you're curious about what goes on with one of these um, small groups, I'm just gonna kind of point over to Karen Spencer. She was a part of the one that we did when we came back to together in the, in the fall and did our renewed series, so she can tell you a little bit about what's involved with all of that. Um, we, because of the nature of today's service, we don't have a designated time for our offering, but I just want to point out that if you're bringing your financial gifts to offer for the ongoing ministry of the church, we're collecting that in the offering jar that's back by the door, so you can place that there. And just because we're not busy enough in here on Sunday morning, we're still going to be busy in here on Sunday afternoon uh, at 2 o'clock. Chinook Winds and the Cascade Quartet are coming together to uh, do a concert at 2 o'clock. So you're welcome to come back for, for that. And it's, um, it's really lovely that we have this space that we can offer for um, those community opportunities as as well, and you will recognize um, Norman will be part of that. Anybody else we know? Okay, just Norman. Do, do we have any other announcements that need to be need to be shared this morning? Well, I invite you to just kind of take a moment and breathe and settle into the space where you are. It's a sanctuary. A sanctuary is sometimes defined as a place of safety or refuge. A sanctuary is also known as a holy place. So I invite you to enter into this time of worship as both, recognizing that holy and safe go together. So enter into this time, this holy time, and find safety. Find a sacred welcome. Find a refuge. Find a spirit of holy challenge. Find a catalyst for growth. Find a spirit to move you to be 
a sanctuary person for others. Enter into this time of worship knowing that you are loved. Welcome to worship. to nurture our children in the ways of your love, we pray for your divine guidance. Thank, Thank you, God, God for blessing us with children. As we celebrate this day, help us to hear the call of Jesus to let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the realm of God belongs. As we gather today for worship, we pray for children everywhere. As you hold them close to you, dear God, protecting them and watching over them, help us to be committed disciples of Jesus Christ, loving our children, holding them close, having compassion, and forming and nurturing them so that they might bear good fruit and become servant leaders, modeling the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stay standing and let's join together in singing our first hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. It's in the big black hymnal that is around you, uh, number 12, and we're going to be singing verses 1 and 3, and the words will also be on this screen.
Please be seated, but I'd like to invite any of the young worshipers that are here with us to come on up. Find a place to have a seat on the floor. Hi. Yeah, come on up. Our nursery is kind of busy today, and that's a good thing. So, have a seat. I'm going to sit up here on the steps. Okay. So, wow, you seem kind of really, really far away, but that's okay. I can see you all. Now I can see you all. Okay. So, how many of you have, you know, you've been supposed to take care of something and life just doesn't turn out the way that you want it to and you find that you need some help taking care of whatever. How many of you have pets? Okay. Do you ever need, you know, and it's kind of your responsibility to take care of the pets? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you need help taking care of that pet? Oh, okay, okay. So like when we, when we went on vacation a couple of weeks ago, we have a dog and we have two cats and we have a horse. So we couldn't just, you know, leave all of those for two weeks and let them take care of themselves. Oh, okay. So we had to, we had to find some help to take care of our pets. Sometimes parents and grandparents need help taking care of their kids. Not just because they're going on vacation, but maybe, I don't know, maybe their schedule just doesn't work out, or uh, maybe they're just really having a very, very, very hard day, and they just need some help for somebody to help them take care of their kids. So guess what? There's some place in town that is there just for that, just to help parents and grandparents and caregivers of children take care of their kids. And, it's, and we're going to be hearing about it while you're in Sunday school. It's called Toby's House. And a lot of these people that are here with us today are from Toby's House. They're the people that make Toby's House happen. They are the people that help provide a place for parents to help take care of their kids and love them. Even the youngest ones, all the way to itty bitty babies. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes, sometimes taking care of the kids, you need stuff. What stuff do you need to take care of kids? Yes. Diapers? How is it possible to even take care of Toby Dozen? We haven't even gone this way. Yeah. What other things do you need to help take care of kids? Food? Toys? Toilet paper? Yeah. Probably some crayons and some markers and some paper and tissues and even Susan socks and glue. So the Sunday school offering that you all from our church have been bringing the last few months, that has been used to get some supplies to go to Toby's house. So this is, this is what your Sunday school offering has done. That is pretty cool. That is really, really, really cool. So there's um, diapers and toilet paper and more diapers and construction paper and disinfectant. What do you get? What's next? More diapers. And more diapers. And then if you saw out in the narthex, there's a whole bunch more stuff that people from our congregation have brought together. So we may not be at Toby's house to help take care of the kids but we are still helping take care of the kids. You are helping take care of the kids. Think about that for a minute. So think about 
that when somebody's mom or dad or grandma or grandpa needs some help with their kids, you're helping them. So do you know what I want to say about that? Thank you. Thank you. So, should we pray over these gifts that you've got? Do you want to help me do that? Are you all okay, okay kind of coming up here and kind of coming around all of these? Okay, stand up. Come over here. Make sure there's room for everybody. And then everybody just kind of hold your hands out like this. So we're going to have, you're going to have the power to bless these gifts. Okay. And you all can do this too. Hands up. Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Bless these gifts. Bless these Let them be, Let them be examples, of examples of love, love. From, us from us to the kids at Toby's house. To house. Amen. Amen. So it is time for Sunday school. Who would like to help carry these things out and put them out there? So. This is kind of heavy. Do you want to do the toilet paper? Do you, oh, this is heavy. Who's, who's feeling really strong? There you go. Do you want to share one of the construction papers? And there's, you can take this one. And you can take that one. OK. And you're going to follow Janet right on out that door. And we'll see you all later. So it's always interesting when you get to be in a different place for worship. We're getting a collection of pens and pencils up here on the lectern, just saying. <clears throat> Our scripture reading today is Psalm 91. It's a, it's a familiar um, scripture, um, mostly because parts of it have been turned into this beautiful song called On Eagle's Wings. So as we hear these words of the original text, well, it's not original because it's been translated into English, but um, if we, when, as we hear them differently than they are in the song, that's what I meant to say, um, let us listen for um, the message about refuge um, that the psalm puts forth and identifies um, how God is indeed um, and can be a refuge for us. Let us hear these words. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. You will be covered with God's pinions and you will find refuge under God's wings. God's faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. No scourge come near your tent. For God will command angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. 
on their hands. They will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. That's our reading for today. May God's blessing be added to the words that we have heard. So at this time, I would like to invite Susie Zeke to come forward. Susie is the executive director of Toby's House. We're going to turn the pulpit over to her, and God's going to work through her. So, Susie, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Um, first, I would like to um, recognize some people in the audience. Um, very first and foremost is April Hall and her and her daughter, Christina. Um, April is October Perez's grandmother and has worked very hard um, to keep her spirit living. Um, so if April and Christina, if you would kindly raise your hand or stand if you'd like. Um, when I found out that I was speaking here, I um, quickly gathered up an email and invited board members and friends of Toby's house. So if you are a board member or a friend, please gently raise your hand. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, well, not everyone at once. Thank you. And then last but not least, um, there is staff here that help me. If it wasn't for the staff, I could not do this at all. So could I get an amen from the staff, please? Amen. All right. Thank you very much. And my family is here. My husband, who's endured uh, hours of tears, um, and his family, and my son and grandson and his wife. Thank you for being here. We got to liven this up. Gosh, dang. You guys are making me nervous. Okay, so as most of you know, my name is Susie Zeke. I'm the executive director of Toby's House Crisis Nursery. I've worked in the field of early childhood for a very long time, 20 plus years. Um, I used to have this really cushy job up on the hill at another child care center. And I had a calling to um, take care of more vulnerable children uh, to give back to my community. So I applied for a job, not really thinking that I would ever get it. Um, and um, what in the world happened, but I ended up getting this job. It was a really tough first year. Um, oh, I forgot, I can take this off. Um, it was a really tough first year. Uh, there were moments where I was on the floor crying. There were moments where I was so tired of being uncomfortable that I thought about quitting my job. And so to be up here uh, mic'd up and with this little clicker uh, is a big deal. And it's a big deal for our community because Toby's house took so long to put together. Um, pretty much from 2014 or 2016, to uh, December of 2020. And um, before I start, I just want to tell everyone that we have only been open for about 14 months. And as of today, we have served 138 children at Toby's house. So um, it's a big deal, it's a very big deal. So, um, Toby's house is just this little teeny tiny house on the north side of town, a very poor neighborhood, um, but it's a great neighborhood to be in. Uh, Toby's House Crisis Nursery provides urgent or emergency care for children zero to six. We provide a safe, nurturing environment for a few hours or a few days, no, for a few hours or for all day if needed. Our nonprofit is accessible to the public and has no income requirements. Like you can make 
absolutely nothing or you can have the highest of incomes. And we see all income levels. Uh, it, it does not matter what you make. All we want to do is strengthen families and keep children safe. Um, we offer referrals that link parents and caregivers to community resources to build resilience and strengthen families. We know that sometimes things don't always go according to plan. Child cares closed because of COVID, a babysitter calls out, um, a medical emergency happens, and it can be difficult to find a trusted caregiver for children with little or no notice. Toby's House believes all children deserve a safe and loving um, and immediate shelter during a family crisis. Infants and toddlers are most vulnerable to child abuse and neglect, often resulting in death. Not all the time, but sometimes. Toby's House is committed to preventing child abuse and neglect by offering free emergency temporary care and essential items to children zero to six years of age. Families who reach out to us need emergency child care for their children. For example, they may be experiencing a mental health issue and need to go to an appointment. They may need They may find that their regular child care is due to COVID or staffing issues and need to work, or they may be experiencing extreme stress in their lives and may need some time to gather their thoughts. The history. This is always the toughest part. So on June 25th, 2011, a little girl by the name of October Perez died by being beaten and killed by her mother's boyfriend. October's mother left her little girl in the care of her boyfriend while she worked and went to school. Little October endured for hours after suffering broken bones, extensive bruising, and brain swelling before medical assistance was called for. October's little body was bruised, multiple bones were broken, her brain was swollen, and she had suffered severe head trauma. She spent two days in a Salt Lake City hospital, then was taken off life support after be becoming, uh, being declared brain dead. Toby's House believes that by offering safety, stability, and a nurturing environment, research has shown that this will help reduce the occurrence of child abuse and neglect and high ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. It's also shown to improve physical, cognitive, and emotional outcomes throughout a child's life. Furthermore, this may reduce health inequities and have a cumulative impact on health. When children come to Toby's house, they're provided with social interaction between other children and the staff. Um, all of the staff that work at Toby's house work to build that relationship. We don't worry about like any academics. Um, my only request for any volunteer or any staff is that they just get down on the ground and they play with the children because a lot of times children just need a friend. They don't need anything else but just somebody just to sit with them and play with them. All services at, at Toby's house are free of charge. 
So we are truly some crazy people that open up our house, provide free care, free services, free diapers, wipes, clothing, anything for the family to make sure that they are strengthened and that they are safe. Staff are highly qualified and trained on trauma-informed care, social and emotional child development, CPR and first aid, um, equality, inclusion, and other current early childhood topics. Uh, we spend a lot of time training um, because a lot of the children that we have at Toby's house experience um, trauma and they have behaviors or just need extra care and attention. Positive relationships are built by the staff with parents and caregivers to ensure a trusting and nurturing connection. When ongoing needs are identified, staff work to ensure families are connected to appropriate services while continuing to help them with immediate child care needs. Quality is very important to me. Um, because of where I worked before, that was really instilled into me. We aren't just babysitters. Um, children are our future, and if they have good quality care, they, they can grow and they can have a strong foundation that will help prepare them for life. So Toby's house is licensed through the state of Montana. That's very important to us. We could just open up the house and take care of children, but we want it to be quality, licensed. Um, we can provide care for up to 12 children, um, and our license does allow us to take children older than six. We can take children up to the age of 12. So no child will be discriminated against because they're seven or eight or nine. Our average attendance a day is about five to eight. Sometimes when we pack in 12 children, it makes us all go bonkers. Um, so I have learned very, I learned uh, last summer um, through a mentor of mine that sometimes you have to have something called acuity of care and um, that helps us retain staff, keep everyone happy and the children safe. Um, we have a personal commitment. I have a personal commitment that I try to um, model to the other employees that um, we offer exceptional high quality care to all children that we serve. So where do we get our money? Um, a lot of times I joke that it's from a wing and a prayer, um, but that's kind of sort of true. Um, so we do apply for grants from the United Way. Uh, 1000 in Action is a local nonprofit that paid our rent for four months. That was very exciting for us. Um, because we're licensed as a group child care, we receive some uh, American Rescue Plan Act money about $86,000, which helps our little teeny tiny nonprofit. Um, private donations, fundraising, and in kind donations. Um, building those relationships with the community is very important. Um, talking to churches, talking to people, being kind to anyone that walks through our door is how we get our money. So how can you support Toby's house? So for everyone in here, I would encourage you, um, it doesn't have to be money, although um, we like money, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but um, you could subscribe to our newsletter. You can go to our website and just something as simple as reading our monthly newsletter, letting you know all of the exciting things that goes on. Um, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, please like our page. Our Facebook is our best friend. We have close to 5,000 followers. Is that correct, Becky? Three? I'm not for sure. We have a lot of friends. 
a lot of friends of, of Toby's house. But we will typically put wish lists, stories that's going on um, at Toby's house. And so we really like support through there. And tell your friends. Tell your friends about us because word of mouth and um, knowing the things that we do at Toby's house and you telling someone could save a child. It could get us that next big donation. It could get us, I don't know, you know, a celebrity coming and, and visiting us and supporting us. So now I'm going to tell you three stories that we have seen at Toby's house. Um, these stories are very impactful. Um, my son and his daughter, or my son and my daughter-in-law, sometimes their child care closes. And I say, why don't you use Toby's house? My son is about to die right now because I called him out. Um, but there is a crisis nursery stigma. Um, you know, because we don't charge, uh, people are afraid to use us. Um, but really, we are here for any child. We are here for any family. It does not matter who you are, how much money you make. We just want to make sure that all parents are able to take care of themselves, whether that means that they go to work, uh, if they go to a counseling appointment, if they need to go to court, or maybe they just need a shower and a nap. So a young family from Malmstrom reached out to us earlier in the summer. The family was expecting their, their, their second baby. Oh, this mama, she was big pregnant. Oh, and she was sweaty. We had a hot summer. Oh, she was sweaty. And she just needed a little rest. She was following around this two-year-old. Um, and uh, Benefice actually referred them to us because this was a family from Nigeria. And because of COVID, this family did not have any support. They hadn't made friends at the base. They had not made friends um, really anywhere. And so Benefice told them about us because that little two-year-old little girl couldn't be in the same room while her mother was delivering a child. So um, they reached out to Toby's house, a little untrusting, didn't know what to expect. But the mom and the dad wanted to be together while she birthed her child, uh, their child. So we offered mama a little bit of respite. Uh, she could just go home, put her swollen ankles up. And then when it came time to give birth, they brought their little girl to us. Thankfully, she was induced. Um, but uh, they brought the little girl to us and we cared for her little girl while the parents together were able to experience the birth. Um, and so you don't really think about that kind of stuff when you don't have family around you. What do you do? Who do you look to for support? Now you can look to Toby's house for support. A father called. He did not use our services before, but he needed some formula for his baby just a basic human need of formula, formula for his baby, so that his baby did not go hungry. Um, so we looked to see what kind of formula we had. We did have that type of formula. So not only are we going to give this formula, but we are also going to offer him resources because that's important. You don't want to enable people, you want to strengthen them and tell them, there are services out there for you. He thought because he was a man, he did not qualify for WIC, but it's women, infants, and children. So this dad could apply for WIC. We made sure that he got the information. He called. The average cost of formula for a baby is uh, $160 a month. That's if they don't have any special kind of formula, like a soy or an allergy type formula. That's pretty expensive. WIC gives you formula um, as a supplement, but sometimes that doesn't last the whole month. So what do families do? What do low-income families do when 
20, 30 dollars is a lot of money for someone. Well, they can come to Toby's house because we get donations from churches, uh, community members, uh, doctors, nurses, and so we have more than enough to be able to give anyone so that no family or child has to go without. So all of you mothers out there, please put yourself into this situation. You just gave birth, and um, right after birth, you know, you are expecting to feel this happiness, this joy, this love. Um, you just experienced this birth, and your husband was there, and you love him so much, and you've got this sweet little baby. What, what could go wrong, right? Well, emotions go wrong life. Um, so a woman came to us because she was suffering from some postpartum depression. And we actually see this more frequently than what we would like. Um, for this mama, the smallest of tasks seems too big to accomplish. A therapist uh, convinced her to give us a call and to see how we could help her. When she walked through the door, we could see that she needed a friend. And really, she looked like a ghost. She was thin, her hair was in her face, and she was just lost, and she just needed some help. Um, we are not licensed counselors. We are not licensed social workers. But boy, maybe we should get those licensings, because um, Sometimes people just need people. But we do know people who we can refer to. And sometimes these mamas or dads or grandparents, they just need a friend. Uh, she just needed somebody that she could cry to. So after sitting with her in silence for what seemed like a really long time, we offered her free care for her baby so that she could collect her thoughts and hopefully gain some relief. It's important for new moms to feel secure, taken care of, and understood. The reality is all moms, but especially new moms, need support, even the moms that have given birth one, two, or three times. Allowing others to help us, help you, is part of caring for yourself, and the bonus is that you will never feel completely alone. Um, so Toby's house is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to midnight. Uh, we usually always have at least two staff on hand. I, anyone who is unfamiliar with Toby's house, I would love to give a tour, have you meet the staff, because I know that we're doing really, really, really good work here in Great Falls. It's progressive. It's preventative. It's not like anything that is being offered here in Great Falls. It's kind of like big city stuff. So if anyone has any questions or uh, would like to um, have a tour, I'll be available afterwards. And I think that's all I have before I completely lose it. I need to get my voice. There we go. I need to find my voice. So thank you so very, very much. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Susan Siri to come come on forward. Um, and, and I don't know, Susie, if you want to have anybody else come up. So um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, um, we invited Susie to uh, visit with our Christian Service Board to tell us a little bit about Toby's house. Was that about a year ago? At some time. Something, yes, I was something very, like that. Very green. And, and so, so Susie, you know, much like she did here, told us, you know, from her heart about what Toby's house is, is all about. And we were looking for some, some ways that we could support um, people in the, in the community that could use a little bit of help. We love children here. We, this congregation has always loved children, and some of the people that have gone before us um, left some money. 
and said we want it to be used for children. So we were looking for some way that we could put those two things together. Um, one of the questions we asked Susie at the time was, um, how much does it cost to run Toby's house for a month? And Susie said, probably about $18,000. The Christian Service Board tucked that away and eventually approached our church council, who then approached our mission corporation, um, where this money has been left to say, can we support Toby's house for a month? And instead of just, you know, 18,000, let's round it up. And so we are, uh, Susan Siri is here to present on behalf of the congregation, the Memorial Corporation Board, um, everybody that has purchased the um, gifts to be presented, everybody that has supported Toby's house in their prayers and in their hopes and volunteers, hopefully we'll get some volunteers over there. Um, this is our way of saying we are absolutely loving the work that you are doing, the service that you are providing to the children and to their families, the refuge that you are providing um, in ways that we cannot. Um, and so here we present to you a, a gift of $20,000 to use as you need to use it. So we kind of said, you know, it's the idea is to support Toby's house for for a month, but if you need it for something else, um, you know what your needs are, you know how the children are going to be, the children and families are going to be served. There's, there are sweet spots in here. <laughs> so, so it's our pleasure to gift you and support the work that you're doing and that all of you are doing. So we also have to say thank you to board of directors members, staff members, families um, for everything that you do to um, provide that safe refuge for those kids and their families. So thank you. I do, I do want to add, um, I don't know, I, I, we must be feeding off of each other. I do want to add that Su Susie and I had a comfort or, yeah, Susie and I, I, we've got Susan and we've got Susie and we've got Toby. And, and um, so Susie and I were having a conversation earlier in the week and she had this is a great question. So why? Of all of the places in, in the community that you could support that, that take care of children, why, why Toby's house? Um, some of it was, was just that we had found about, out about Toby's house. Um, we also loved that it's a prevention that it is to prevent um, harm for children. And who can't get behind that? So thank you ag again for that work. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the microphone from you and because I'm gonna, I need to introduce the next piece and you can go ahead and have a seat. And Greg, you going to take over for the, the PowerPoint now. Um, our choir has prepared uh, a special number for today. Um, it's um, a, a song that begins with um, some speaking. And I'm, I'm going to kind of stretch this out here a little bit because Eric needs to be making his way up here. Um, it involves some speaking of a child. It is the voice of a child put to song um, asking for the hope that um, the world can, can give them. So uh, please enjoy the uh, musical offering that the choir has to offer today. Um, give us hope. That's the name of it, right? Yeah, give us hope. And Cindy is reminding me that uh, there's a congregational participation spot that is uh, some clapping. Cindy will turn around and show you when to clap, and then she'll turn around and tell you when to stop. I try not to touch the mic because it causes a boom, but unfortunately, whoever was speaking before me was a little shorter. I'm looking at you, Lynn. I am Erickson. Of all the feelings that a young person can have, 
There is one that makes life seem desolate, empty, and sometimes not even worth living when it's not there. Hope. Hope for the future. Hope to be loved. Hope to be heard. When children are without hope, they are robbed of one of those most defining parts of their childhood. We must never underestimate the power of giving hope to a child. The whispers in my heart speak so softly. Are they really there if no one hears them? My voice is so small and so soft. Can you hear me? Give us hope and we'll show you the way. For, for helping us make a, an exciting, exciting musical offering today. Thank you so very much. And thank you, choir. We come to a time in our worship life together where we share the joys and the concerns of our lives and wrap them up um, in care for one another and to offer them to God in prayer. Um, so today, certainly, we are wrapping Toby's house up in love and prayer. We are also um, hoping that you all are wrapping up the people of, of the Ukraine in your hearts and in your, and in your prayers. Um, we do not know what the future for that country on the other side of the world is, um, so we pray for peace and safety. For all of those people remembering that even 
even in a place so far away, there are children that are impacted um, by drastic events. We are also remembering here in our congregation, um, or I ask you to lift up Peggy Flowen and her family. Peggy's son, Garth, passed away earlier this, this week. So if you would please hold um, Garth's family in your prayers. Garth leaves behind, I believe, a 21 or a 22-year-old and a 14-year-old um, and a wife. So please um, hold Peggy and her family in your prayers. Anything else this morning? What other joys and concerns do we bring today? Yes, Dean. Uh, let's keep uh, Sue in our prayers as she has uh, her shoulder replaced. Oh, oh, Sue Turton has a new shoulder, so she's recovering from, from that. We'll keep Sue in our thoughts and prayers. Yes, Sharon. And Sharon's getting a new hip on Tuesday. It's new body part week. <clears throat> we'll just stop there. <laughs> Anything else this morning? Yes, Hank. Um, the memory of my fraternity brother, Reverend Stephen Wilson, who was laid to rest yesterday. So, uh, Hank's fraternity brother, Stephen, um, who passed away from cancer and uh, his life was celebrated yesterday. Anything else this morning? Yes, Dana. Celebration for the students in Great Falls. Great Falls High School Drama Department presented their final performance of Charlotte's Web yesterday. It was wonderful. So if they're having another production and you can get to see a show at Great Falls High or CMR, I encourage you to go. Thanks, Dana. So if you can hear... Um, the students at Great Falls High that put on the production of Charlotte's Web um, sounds like it was a, a fabulous opportunity and takes a lot to, to put on those productions. So uh, prayers of joy um, for the students in our midst. Um, you'll, you'll also notice that we have kind of mixed colors over in the choir. So uh, these days we're kind of doing things together as a joint choir with Christ United Methodist and the UCC choir. So it's great to have some, some blue robes mixed in amongst the purple. And we had the opposite um, for the uh, United Methodist service earlier, earlier today. I invite you to be with me in prayer. Oh God, we offer this morning a simple prayer. We pray for the world. I'm going to stop right there because I forgot. We have a prayer song first. I was waiting for the music to come in underneath it. It wasn't there. So. Cindy's going to start us off with song. For this morning a simple prayer we pray for the world that its leaders consider in all decisions what is right and just that its people so long separated from one another work toward reunion of the human family we pray for the people of the Ukraine those whose world is coming crashing down around them. We pray for the people of Russia 
who do not want to be involved in this invasion. We pray for your church, that its worship honor you and its deed, pl deeds please you, that the people of the church act with joy and courage. We pray for those who hurt, that physical ills receive the kind of healing only your spirit can give, that emotional distress and relational turmoil be touched by your calming, settling hand. We pray for children everywhere, that they may have a future, that their capacity for wonder and their tendency toward trust become models for our faith. We pray that you strengthen us to make wise, life-giving and affirming decisions so we can participate in the processes of reconciling, building, healing and hoping. Our prayers are offered in the name of Jesus, whom we call Christ and who teaches us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and let's join together in singing our closing hymn number 495 in the big black book in front of you. Um, we're going to sing verses 1 and 3. And then we'll have the uh, benediction and, and you can be seated for the postlude. And then I'm going to ask um, Susie to come and stand at the door with me at the end of the service. So let's join together in song. As we leave the holy refuge of this place, may we always remember that we are never far from God's embrace. So go forth to love and serve God. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you now and forevermore. Go in peace. And please be seated for the postlude. Amen.